not a bad thing to do. Um, but it is now on. Uh, and I guess we may as well get started so I don't need to be on this screen anymore. Um, will one of you come on and say something just to make sure that I'm getting the audio recorded? Hello. Okay. I came on perfect. That's good. I saw the I saw the head sight, the headsets little thing shoot all the way to the right. All right, uh, welcome to Arcos, September fourth, twenty twenty, Rensselaer Center for Open Source. This is our second meeting, and this will be our first pitch meeting. So I let's see how. By now, we have asked you to do a few things. Um, it's not too late if you haven't done them, but we do need to get you. Uh, set up. Remember, this is a remote semester, so everything we do, we're doing remotely. We need you here uh, so we can contact you and so you can contact us and so that you can know, um, you know, what's going on because, well, it's important to know what's going on, right? So you should have joined Discord. Matamos is still available, particularly if you're in a country that doesn't have Discord. Uh, you're welcome to use the Matamos. We have the important uh, chat channels forwarded to uh to Mattermost and forwarded from Mattermost to Discord. Um, it does have a, you know, Discord does allow you to do, uh, to do voice conversations and things. So if you can use Discord, please do. If you can't, Mattermost is available and we will keep there. We'll keep that open um, through the semester. Uh, there are 160 seats. Um, Professor Kuzman and I are, actually there's 180 seats, I guess. Um, there are three sections, uh, a late section, section 11, um, we are not actually running a late section this semester um, just because we have to run everything asynchronous anyway. So I guess you could register for Section 11, no matter whether you're late or not. Um, you know, you have the ability to attend here regardless. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to uh, do anything special if you're part of the late section, right? So, so just, you know, continue to use things the way, you know, sign up for the late section if you want to be there, but don't worry about it. Don't, there's no special thing. You'll just attend the lectures that you can, uh, meetings that you can attend. You'll attend your small group, and the things you can't attend, you'll do asynchronously uh, through the videos we'll upload. Um, so, but but please register if everything's full and you can't get in. We can sign you in. Um, the 160 cap on Professor Kuzman and I sections, I think 80 apiece, and the 20 on the late session are about our normal numbers. So we can go a little higher if we need to. Um, we do want to control it so we don't have like 400 people. That would be uh, that would well, that would kill us. Um, but that's you know, we'll stay below that. Um, make sure you're registered on arcos.io. Arcos.io is our main uh, website. Uh, there is a project this semester run by uh, Nia to and actually Stephen Vanzile too probably um, that are working on on its replacement. Um, but for now, register yourself on arcos.io. If you're already registered, mark yourself as active. We want everybody active this semester. Um, it gives, it allows us to count how many of you there are, get some statistics, and contact you if we need to. And then confirm that you can access our course on Submitty. Um, we're going to use that for things like submitting. Uh, we'll use that as part of our attendance uh, taking, and we'll also use that for things like status updates. I'll use that to generate, uh, Professor Kuzman and I will use that to generate rainbow grades uh, to communicate back and forth with you. On, on how you're doing and, and things like that. So please make sure you can access it. You'll need it, uh, and we can take care of it now if you're not. Um, if you do just log in, if you do just create, um, sorry, uh, and, and enroll in the class uh, on SIS, it does take about a day, um, possibly two days, to get you into the course. It depends on how fast the registrar is uh, putting these things into the system. So you will actually show up automatically, but if you need to show up before then, uh, let us know and we will take care of it. Um, all right, so now I've had my say. You won't hear from me until uh, the end, probably. Uh, when we, we'll talk about some attendance stuff. I'll turn this over to Frank. Frank, take her away. Thank you. I had to switch computers. Can you hear me okay from my laptop now? Uh, yeah, it's a little distorted, but not bad. Sorry about that, but okay. Project pitches. So for all the new projects who will be pitching next week, take note of what the existing projects pitch here. This would be a good example for what you need in your intro slide. And there's no pressure. This is not a presentation. It's just a really short intro to your project so people get a sense of what you're trying to create. 
And please aim whoever is pitching to keep your pitches to around one to two minutes so that we get through everyone in a good time. Next slide. Here is the order. Note who is before you. And Professor Turner, we have all these slides, all of your slides in this presentation. So Professor Turner will be controlling the slides. So just be ready to go to unmute yourself when your slide is up. And Dr. Turner, could you pin the uh, slides, please? Uh, sure. I think. I hope that did it. We had some problems in class uh, yesterday. Is that working? Sorry. Sounds good. OK. Yep. Any other questions before we start? If not, we can start with open circuits. Oh, hello. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Yes. OK, cool. It's funny, right as I went to press the unmute button, the Java update available thing just popped up right in front of it. So that's always great. Um, but hey, uh, my name is Leon. Um, I am the project manager for Open Circuits. Uh, I created this project four or five years ago now, uh, when I was in high school. Um, I was in classes at community college, and I worked with a professor there to create this project. And when I came to RPI, I decided to bring it to Arcos after I heard about it. Um, and so it's been at Arcos for four plus semesters now, and we've had many changes throughout those semesters. Um, so. Open Circuits is a free online digital circuit designer. So if you've ever done digital electronics or anything like that, something these are the kind of electronics you would find in a class like Compor on um, computer organization. Um, and uh, our general tech stack is we use TypeScript, SAS, and Golang. SAS is a styling thing, very similar to CSS. Um, Golang is our backend, and TypeScript is 90% of the code you'll write. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, um, so we have a lot of plans this semester. Um, we are a fairly complete project, you could say. We we have full uh, about a year ago now, and there are some students using um, at a different college. And but now is the time that we're creating quality of life enhancements, um, some things like tutorials and more documentation, uh, more web pages, more tutorials, all that kind of stuff. Um, and another big part of this project, um, as Turner mentioned last um, ARCO session, was that we were, we we're planning on extending to analog circuitry. So if you're an electronics uh, EE major or CSE major, this might be the project for you. Um, we are trying to compete and replace SPICE because we know that it's awful. Um, and so that is one of the big plans. And actually, over the summer, a lot of um, progress was made on that. Um, and I don't have a, an example here, but it is on, on our website and stuff like that. Um, so if you would like to work on this project, please contact me. Um, my name is Leon Montilegre. If you just at Leon, I'm probably the first one that's going to show up. Um, my email is montel2, it's at the bottom of the slide there, at rpi.edu. Um, if you've never worked on a large code base before, or you've never worked with web technology and you want to learn how to do that, I would say that this is the project for you as well. Um, we are very beginner friendly. We've had people who have never coded at all work on this project, people who are complete straight EE majors that just do circuitry and barely know how to code. They've worked on this project and have fully succeeded. Um, so as long as you're willing to learn and ask questions, I feel like you can fully succeed on this project. Um, if I left anything out, you can find more information on our GitHub. Um, there's stuff on the slides here, and you can always just DM me. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah. Oh, and Olivia said she added the second slide. No, oh, I asked Turner to skip the to delete the second slide because it was actually there on accident. Um, 
But yeah. And it is now gone. Sorry about that. No, no issues. Any, uh, yeah. we're just going to go to the next, right? Or are we going to uh, open for questions? Why don't we get through them? And then if there's any questions, we'll, we'll have a question and answer session at the end. Sounds good to me. Okay. Tudor base is up next. Jason or Jeremy, are you here? Uh, yeah, is my microphone fine? Sorry. Micro microphone is uh, fine. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, hi, my name is Jeremy. I'm a junior studying computer science at RPI, and I'm one of the project managers for TutorBase along with Jason. Um, and, you know, Jason and I, um, a problem that we realized that happens at RPI is that due to the resources uh, such as ALAC for tutoring, we noticed that um, it's a very limited amount of resources. Um, and whether you go uh, whether you go to ALAC tutoring for a certain class or sometimes even office hours for a certain class, there tends to be a lack of time that, and personalized individual time that you get when you're being tutored and being helped. Um, and we both experienced this tutoring and mentoring for ALAC and things like that. So the solution that Jason and I uh, proposed for this, which we started uh, during the summer for TutorBase, was a web platform that can seamlessly connect RPI's tutors and RPI students um, essentially on demand. Um, so the two main features that we wanted to implement and we wanted this project to have is that on the student side, students would be easily able to find a tutor and set up an appointment in a very short amount of time. And tutors would also be provided with a business management tool to help organize and visualize their appointments and data metrics for their, um, for their clients. So as of right now, uh, the tech stack that we decided to use was the MERN stack, which is MongoDB, Express, React, and Node. And over the summer of the last semester, the completed features that we uh, worked on had to do mostly with the client end, which gave the user the ability to search by class and subject, um, a very intuitive and simple scheduling process, and email booking notifications and reminders uh, once a scheduling um, appointment was made. And this is both on the client end. However, we did not get much work done on the features on the tutor end. And we also didn't finish all of the back end work um, and all of the API endpoints that we needed to work with the data on the client end and the tutor end. So going forward this semester, our goals include finishing up the client and tutor back end functionality to actually get a minimum viable product out there. Um, so this also includes implementing the tutor dashboard features, such as the ability to manage bookings, data metrics, and see your visualization of this data and also conduct some user feedback testing to make sure that we really nail the AI and get it down. Uh, sorry, not the AI, the UI and get it down um, and make it a very intuitive process for both the tutors and students. Um, however, this semester we are trying to look for those to help on the team that do have some experience with the <coughs> tech stack that we're using. However, if you are interested in working on the project and don't have the experience with the technology, um, feel free to reach out to us anyway, and we can talk about it and figure it out. Great. Thank you, Tutor Base. Mm -hmm. And next up, we have Smart Writer. All right, cool. Can you guys hear me? Oh, Very nice. Also here. All right, awesome. Um, so my name's Ethan. Um, I'm a sophomore CS major. And last semester, um, some friends and I launched the development of Smart Writer. Our goal was being the all-in-one RPI transportation app. Um, so uh, this is going to be a cross-platform app. Um, we're using Google's Flutter database, Flutter for the front end, and for the back end. Um, sure, essentially, it's to have a and platforms. Um, some of our main planned features are um, to call SafeRide like an Uber. Um, we also want to um, include the bus and shuttle schedules with search features. For example, if you wanted to um, you know, find out how to get to Walmart at like um, 3 a.m., uh, I don't know why you want to do that, but um, you can just you know click on the search button um, and find out uh, if that's possible and when the next um, bus would be. There's also a map of all of the um, vehicles and stops, um, which allows you know travel around the campus and um, the Albany area. 
um, to be much safer and more intuitive. So some of our goals for this semester are to complete the basic safe ride integration. Um, we've done a lot of work last semester. Um, we've essentially set up the front end UI and everything. Um, we still need to complete the bus data integration. Um, the CDTA recently changed um, the way their API works. So um, we're trying to integrate that into the app this semester. And we also want to improve our project organization and the user experience. Um, this semester we're trying to use um, GitHub projects along with um, issue tracking to um, sort of, you know, um, figure out uh, how we want to assign everybody um, to different tasks on the project. And um, the user experience right now um, can use some work. Uh, it We're trying to make it more modern and um, make everything a little faster to use. Um, so no experience is necessary to join the project. Last semester, we sort of learned how to learn from scratch. Hopefully this semester, we can provide a little bit more um, instruction and resources to help you guys learn. But if you want to join the project, to me, um, my name is Yib on both the Discord and the Mattermost. You can also email me. Uh, all of the info is on the slides that you can find. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Next up is Shuttle Tracker. All righty. First of all, can everyone hear me? I assume so. Perfect. Yep. No. Um, all right. So my name is Sean. Um, I am one of the two project managers on Shuttle Tracker, along with Derek Lee, who will be talking in about 45 seconds. Um, some general information about Shuttle Tracker, as the name suggests. We track shuttles around RPI's campus. Um, our primary uh, language includes Go, JavaScript, and the Vue uh, library, TypeScript, and we use a Postgres database. Uh, we are also currently and almost complete with a Flutter um, app version of the Shuttle Tracker, which we will be hoping to release um, this fall. Um, and I will let Derek talk about our goals. So yeah, hi, uh, my name is Derek. Uh, as Sean said, I am also one of the project managers for Shuttle Tracker. So last semester, we got a lot done regarding uh, our mobile app. And as Sean said, we are looking forward to releasing it in the fall. Um, uh, for the goals for this semester, we would like to basically write tests for our app to ready it for like uh, publishing to the App Store and the Google Play Store. Um, we're also looking to improve our ETA panel and get it like deployed out to the website. So it would show all the current ETAs of all the shuttles to whichever stops you would want. Uh, we're also looking to finish our feedback form, which would allow users to send any feedback they would want on uh, the tracker and stuff. Also, since uh, we're virtually back on campus, uh, we'll be restarting our Union TV panel uh, project, which has the shuttle tracker running on the TV in the Union, which constantly displays uh, the, route, the shuttle routes. And finally, uh, we'll be looking to add more improvements to our admin panel, such as uh, stop and route editing and other quality of life improvements. So yeah, um, our project is pretty large. So if you're a, like a complete beginner or you don't really know any of these languages, feel free to reach out because um, as long as you're willing to learn, we'll be happy to uh, work with you. Yeah. Uh, our contact info is on the slide, so you can probably add us on Discord just by our names. And if you would like, join our Shuttle Tracker Discord and ask questions there. Thanks, guys. Next up is Paul Buddy. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Neha, and I am the founder of Paul Buddy, our RPM hunter, who is actually listed on the slide. He couldn't be here at the Arcos meeting today. So I'm going to be introducing you guys to Paul Buddy. So if any of you have ever used eye clickers, you'll know that they're really unnecessarily expensive and kind of clunky. So our solution for this is to have a website called Poll Buddy, which will ideally replace the eye clickers. So how it works is that the professor will ask you a question and then everyone, all the students will open up the website and click on the correct answer. 
and then afterwards you can see the answers and graphs with all the statistics and everything listed out. So currently for the front end, we're using React.js. Um, and for the back end, we're using Express and MongoDB. And as of now, both the front end and back end individually are mostly finished. So this semester, we'll mostly work on integrating them together. So currently, we're looking for people just to come in and help with that. Um, so if you have any experience, that's great. But if not, that's completely fine. We'll definitely bring you up to speed and get you started with that. So uh, if you're interested in joining us or if you have any questions, you can email us at join us at pullbuddy.app because we have a website. Um, otherwise, you can join our Discord and Mattermost um, channels or contact Hunter directly. Thank you. Next up is Telescope. Uh, hi, I'm Nia. Um, I'm the project lead for Telescope. Uh, Telescope is a project um, looking to replace observatories sometime. Um, we're looking to deploy sometime within this semester and perhaps replace uh, observatory entirely in December. Um, uh, we're written in Rust and uh, we use the Actix web framework. We use Postgres for our database. Um, we have Diesel as our ORM and query builder. Um, we use Bootstrap and Handlebars for front end stuff. And then we expose an API in GraphQL using Juniper. Um, we're moving uh, pretty fast um, since we are looking to deploy so soon, um, but that shouldn't discourage you. If um, you're interested in joining the project, feel free to reach out to me at my email here or DM me on Discord. Um, I would recommend uh, some prior experience in um, Rust um, and perhaps Actix, but it's uh, of course not you know necessary. Um, and uh, Looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Great, thanks. Next up, we have an intuitive platform for societies. Hello, uh, can everyone hear me? Yep. All right, awesome. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Andy, a sophomore CS math dual major, and I'm the current project manager of APES, an intuitive platform for societies. So we can begin by asking, why APES? Well, as a student, groups and on campus. It's not easy to make contact with with groups we are interested in. Similarly, as a group club or organization, it's also complicated to organize events and post announcements to both members of the group and also the general student body, with the multitude of social media that we all use, as well as the mailing lists. So that's why we have our solution, Apes, an intuitive platform for societies. APES is a web application platform that seeks to provide a general and intuitive way for communication between students and groups. Its goal is to supply the clubs and organizations with a, with a simple way to publicize events and post updates to their members or other students, and also to provide students with an easy way to find new groups that they're not already a part of. As of right now, we have most of the basic infrastructure set and a lot of key features complete, which include group management, for authentication, post notifications and other features. Uh, with these main components set up, we've begun moving into a deployment stage and we're hoping to continue with that this semester. So last semester, our focus was mostly on improving the facility of the app and what the and so we're trying to bring the app to RPI community. Current is at apes.cs.rpi.edu, uh, meaning anyone who has an RPI account can access the app via the VPN. So I encourage you all to check it out. Uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, we use standard web development tools such as Node.js and React. We also use technologies such as SQLize, Express, MariaDB, and Docker. For this semester, we're looking for anyone interested or willing to learn to join the team. And no experience is necessary. If you are interested in web development, this is a good project to join. Uh, if you'd like, you can check out the repository at the link on the slide and feel free to message me on Mattermost or by email if you have any questions or would like to join. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Up next, we have Pipeline. Hello. Hello. Um, 
My name is Namish and I am the project manager for Pipeline. Uh, Pipeline is the project that manages the website poly.rpi.eu, which is run by the student newspaper organization on campus. And our website is actually live. It has been live since the middle of 2019. And you can check that at poly.rpi.edu. The goal of Pipeline this semester is to advance the website by adding more interactive features. And last semester, we um, we maintained the website by doing just that. Um, we have a new dark mode feature that's almost done. And we've also added a lot of documentation, which actually came in handy pretty recently. The website uses Django and Wagtail primarily. Um, Django is a very broad framework that's used in a lot of websites, and Wagtail is a bit more specific to content management services. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact me at my Mattermost um, or my email, and you can also visit our GitHub where um, you can see all of our code. And I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Up next is Yaks. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yep. All right, cool. So Yaks, this is going to be one of the craziest, most exciting semesters we're going to have in a while. Um, well, I hope it's going to continue getting more exciting. Um, but last uh, last few semesters, we decided to start building Yaks uh, to become multi-semester, multi-campus, uh, cross-device, and basically just take Yaks and just put it on. Uh, just make it so a lot stronger. Um, so what we have already is the multi-campus support. We've kind of just detected, uh, detached ourselves from RPI dependencies. Um, we now have multiple semesters. So now you can see spring, summer, uh, fall. Um, we have prerequisites. So now you can expand course information and see more information there. Um, and yes, it's going to get a lot more exciting. And what we're looking to do in the future is look at grad requirements, more performance, uh, schedule. I see it's a little cut off, but uh, anyway, a lot more fun things. Um, so who should join? Uh, like Python, technologies. If you know how to code, you should know how to know how to do Python. And if you've passed yes one, then you already know that. So anybody can really join Yax. Uh, you want to work on a larger project. You want to work on a larger team. You want to build something great. You want to build something big. And what's really interesting this semester is we're going to be doing something. Uh, we're going to be collaborating with research. Um, so I, I don't know if you see the quote, but Sola Shirai, a uh, CS student from RPI, uh, is working on an intelligent integration with Headless World Constellation at RPI. Uh, so this is a really, really interesting, really new um, new research that's going on now to look at course, for, uh, course requirements, uh, graduation requirements, and kind of explain course recommendations to students in a very simple way and providing really powerful recommendations. Um, and additionally, why us? Uh, we have many things. We really try to invest in the developer experience. So we have things like feature environments. So anytime you push a specific feature, um, instead of us testing on our own separate environments, we have shared environments that we can go and test things with and get quick feedback. We've automated testing so you know when things work. You can have quicker debugging, and we really use try to use simplest technologies to get the job done, uh, and really leave the work towards the development side. So if you're if you know Python, you know JavaScript, you're looking to work on, work on something cool. If you're working to look on research. Uh, this is the semester to join. We're going to make this amazing, and uh, we should be good for deploying the spring on the new X. So definitely excited for the semester, and I hope you are as well. Awesome, thank you. And a quick reminder to everyone to uh, keep your mic muted when you're not presenting. And last but not least is Venue. Hello, hey, um, I'm Ethan. Uh, you guys have kind of yes or no maybe used Venue before. Uh, basically what it is, it's attendance, it's engagement calculating. Um, also, let's professors kind of integrate uh, not only asynchronous and synchronous lectures together in one place. Uh, I have 
a lot, a lot, a lot of future plans for this. Uh, I kind of want to take aim at what LMS tried to poorly do. Um, yeah. We're, uh, we're Vue, Mongo, Express, Node.js, uh, Mevin Stack. Yeah, rip LMS, honestly, they, but they got to go. Um, I think you will all agree. Yeah, uh, we have worked for literally everybody. Uh, documentation has been slowly getting behind. Uh, testing slowly getting behind, but I'm planning to aim right back at that once I fix our video upload issue. Uh, yeah, so if anybody here knows anything about Google Cloud Service, uh, please talk to me. Um, yeah, we need anyone, everyone, uh, people, doing things. We have lots of things, lots of front-end stuff, lots of back-end stuff, documentation, etc. That's all. Great. Thank you. And I think that is it. So thank you for pitching. That went almost entirely smoothly. And so, next slide, please. What's happening next Friday? So note that due to the holiday weekend, Next uh, Monday, we have off, and Tuesday follows a Monday schedule. So the next Arcos meeting is not until Friday the 11th. So we are not meeting on Tuesday. And in this meeting on the 11th, new projects will pitch their slides in the same way that you saw the projects here pitch. Pay attention to everyone who's not pitching a project. Do what projects interest you. Remember that you can find the slides in the slides channel at any point afterwards, as well as watch the recordings after and reach out to help desk on Discord for any help with pitching or really any general questions. Next slide. And the to-do for next class, whoever is pitching a new project must submit the proposal form. Note the link at the bottom, and this will be posted on the Discord again. So remember, if you want to propose a project, whether or not you want new members, please submit this form and if you want to look for members of your project, make your slide channel. Everyone not pitching the slide, again, go through the slides, review, see if you're interested in anything. And of course, last but not least, have a great weekend. Now on to attendance with Turner. Okay, hi. Um, so first off, before we get to attendance, um, a lot of these projects are web-based projects. That's great. But if you don't wanna do a web-based project, and you can't find anything in the project deck, um, please feel free to, to go to uh, arcos.io and click on uh, our old projects. You may have to go uh, click. There's a current and past projects button. Click to get on our past projects. You can look at things that have been done, see if you find something you like, or invent something out of your, uh, out of your own imagination. Web projects seem to be uh, pretty popular right now. That's great, but they don't have to be. So... Uh, the only, uh, there's no excuses, right? Um, so let's take a look at this. We have attendance in Arcos. The reason we take attendance is because, well, one, we need to be able to reach out to you guys. So it's one of those things where if we don't have attendance, then we, don't, we lose our opportunity to communicate with you at least twice a week. So you do need to show up. You do need to pay attention here. This isn't the only work you need to do. Uh, we do expect you to work outside of these, of these time periods. Um, but during these time periods, we are going to take attendance. Now, that brings up an issue because some of you are in uh, vastly different time zones than us. So we are trying to come up with solutions that allow us to take attendance either live in this lecture or uh, via video, uh, via asynchronous. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use two different modes for, for taking attendance. Both of them can be used synchronously or asynchronously. Uh, for venue, in a few seconds, I'm going to put up a QR code. Um, the QR code will, uh, you go into your, your, your mobile app, go to the venue site, venue-meetings.com. Uh, I think it's all been posted uh, previously. I should have put that in there, but it's posted previously. 
um, take a picture with your smartphone or your, your mobile device of the QR code and it will uh, check you in, right? That's good for live. That's only during uh, the time period that that venue is actually, or that this class is actually, this meeting is actually going on. Asynchronously, as soon as this meeting is over, we will get a video. And uh, when I get the video, I will upload it to the venue site under this particular class, so under 9-4's uh, class time. You click on there, you can watch the video, you can see, and, and it will track your progress through the video. So if you watch the entire video, you will be marked as having attended the class, right? So for venue, you can either use the QR code that I'm gonna give you in a few seconds, that will only work during the class period, it won't work after the class period, uh, or you can go to venue site and watch the video uh, in its entirety and then you'll get credit for being here. Um, we are also going to use Submitty just because some people were having issues with Venue um, and because uh, Venue is, we are the major test group for Venue right now. So we expect that every now and then things are going to uh, go a little bit wrong. I'm not gonna say grossly wrong. Um, so for Submitty, um, if you've taken any course here, uh, CS1, data structures, uh, most of the upper level courses, you, you've used uh, Submitty. I'm gonna give you a, today's secret code in just a few seconds. Take today's secret code, um, type it into a text file, attendance.txt, go to Submitty, right, the link is here, find today's attendance, and uh, upload your file with today's secret code into, um, yeah, you know, type today's secret code in. Um, so the secret code today is going to be, let's see. Let me change this. Um, let's make it pitch with an exclamation point. Okay, so if you put that into a file, attendance.txt, you will get credit for today's class. Uh, put it into attendance.txt, upload it to uh, Submitty. You will have until midnight tomorrow uh, to do that. We should be able to get you there in time. Um, and then on top of that, let's kind of go and uh, get here. Huh, all right, that was an error on my part that should have been opened. It will be opened immediately after this meeting. And of course, venue meetings is not coming up. Yeah, I'm aware of that, but everything has been so uh, weird today. Yeah, I'll, I'll try that. I don't know what's going on. That is right, right? Venue meetings. Do you have it up, Ethan? Why don't you uh, present your screen? I will turn off the infinite recursion. We will pin it to Ethan.
All right, so. Works for me. You can hop back over. You okay. know, you can still get the QR. Yeah, uh, could you pop up the QR? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I apologize. Uh, I forgot for. that WebEx does that. I need to look into that. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's a picture in picture here that I could try to show you. Uh, let's. Uh, we'll we'll do that next time when I actually uh, have this preloaded. I don't know what's going on, um, but here you go. This is the the, the, the code for today. Um, you can use this. Oh, I did it again. I did it again, didn't I? It's it should be showing right now. It, it looks good to me. Um, and then the uh, in the chat, I'm typing in the uh, the secret phrase with pitch exclamation point. All right. How come that didn't show up? Okay. Question, if I'm sharing on WebEx and I share an application and I go to another application, do you guys stop seeing the previously shared application? No, not unless you share something else. Oh, okay. So you continue to see. Yeah. If you make that other... a little bit bigger, okay. it may help people out though. Yeah, sure. Okay. And again, you can do, there's three ways to do it. You take a picture of this from the venue app that will put you in. Second way to do it is you wait till I upload the video or wait till actually Ethan uploads the video into a uh, venue. And then you watch the entire, the entire video from the venue site. Or the third way is you put pitch exclamation point into a file attendance.txt and uh, and open that up in or and upload that to Submitty. And yes, I thought I set the time to go off and be opened now, um, but maybe what I did was set the due date to be now. Um, that's a possibility. Um, so this is it. Class is over. Um, but I'm gonna hide this now. I'm gonna take the the screen back from Ethan. Uh, and we will open this up if you have any questions about about um, any of the uh, the applications you've seen, we will uh, we will answer them. Okay, Ethan, I think we can take this one down and then I'll get the screen back and we will uh... looks like we have sixty five percent. Awesome. So it's working it's working for at least. 66% of you. That's better than expectations. Um, do we have any questions? Did Quack steal Yaks IP? Um, so it's an interesting thing about IP. Uh, oops, that's not what we want. You guys don't care about that. Interesting thing about IP. I, I don't think they stole Yaks's IP. They may have, they may have stole the idea of, of what to do. Um, but they could have stolen the code, and uh, Yax is not a uh, Yax is an open source project, so that's actually um, allowed, believe it or not. Let's see, let's do to this one. Um, question about telescope a freshman, so I don't know what observatory about observatory. What does telescope do? Okay, so um, that's I'll uh, I'll take a shot at this first, and then I'm going to open it up for Nia. Um, so observatory is when you go to arcos.io, the actual project you're going to is uh, is is uh, observatory. So what telescope is doing? If you know if you go to arcos.io, you'll see what it does. It maintains a database of all our projects. Um, you know all of our students. It allows us to take attendance when we're not when we don't have this asynchronous problem, a bunch of stuff like that. So, uh, you know, essentially, it, it's the, the the center of Arcos. So their telescope is is vying to be a replacement for that. Yeah, I would say that's accurate. Um, observatory, as Wes said, currently runs Arcos.io. Telescope is aiming to replace it and improve upon it. Um, some of the key things we're aiming to improve is uh, attendance will be available through 
code like it was from observatory, but also with QR code like venue does or with a link or with a special phrase like we're doing with Submitty right now. So that's like an example. We have another, you know, we have a bunch of improvements we're trying to make. Um, but in the end, yes, the, the aim is to host Telescope on Arcos.io and Telescope's uh, role in Arcos will be to maintain a database of projects, users, and um, emails and a bunch of other things. Let's see, how does project joining work? Um, okay, so Ethan, you got messages on Discord. So take a look at that. Um, yeah, you don't need to use both. Uh, both of them will work. Professor Kuzman and I, he doesn't know this yet. Professor Kuzman and I will do the consolidation of the database. Um, project joining works. So what we want you to do is if you have an idea, uh, we're gonna pitch again on Friday. Once we're done pitching, we're gonna have project pairing. Um, project pairing is when you guys can go out and join projects, talk to the, the, the project, project managers and uh, and do an agreement, right? This is symmetric. You have to want to join a project and they have to agree to, you know, they have to have room for you essentially. Um, so once you've done that, then you'll get together with your group and you'll write a, a project proposal that lays out what the project is going to do, what you're going to do and and who works on it. Uh, Frank, Livia, Kate, Stephen, any, any comments on that? I should let you guys... Uh, Fill in those as well. Let's take your comments here. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not hearing you guys. So I'm going to assume that's good news, maybe. Okay. Um. Okay, no, no particular comments here. Uh, uh, microphone's being weird. Grading is based on fulfillment of the roles you've given. So we gave you a, a rubric at the, at the start. Um, grading is partially on attendance. You know, so you do need to show up for most of, of, the, of the, the meetings. It's partially on status updates. We want you to tell us what you're doing every week. Um, It's partially on a presentation you'll give at the end of the semester, and then it's partially on the the effort you put in during the semester. We don't um, we don't have a specific the project has to work or you have to achieve these milestones to succeed. We do have you need to show us the effort you're doing uh, with demonstrable um, commits to GitHub. Uh, or, or, or a wiki page or, or something that is publicly trackable where we can track what you've done. Uh, and you have to show us how you've developed over the semester by either generating code, generating documentation, generating other artifacts, building a wiki. Um, just and, and it has to be you know, sufficient. You, you, this is a, a four credit course over 15 weeks. So you know, it is a, a significant amount of work. Um, but that's kind of what we're, about 50% of your grade is, is based off of of doing that. Um, uh, Professor Goldschmidt, if you were here, would tell you that this is the course that um, you're allowed to fail. What he means is you are allowed not to meet, make your objectives, um, you know, rather than fail to, uh, to uh, execute. We don't measure you on how well you meet the objectives of the semester. We evaluate you on how well you demonstrate effort during the semester in an open source way right? Everything has to be open. And uh, how you get around issues you're going to have, because I can guarantee that even the mature projects are going to have issues this semester that they're not aware of right now. Um, does that a good answer, Frank, Olivia, Steve, Kate? Good note, Frank. We are always looking into how to improve the way we conduct things here, uh, this online semester in particular. This is, uh, this is stressing our resources. I just found out, for example, this is the first thing I've done on a sunny day at this time. Um, apparently, it turns me into a ghost, at least on my green screen. I will improve that next time. Any other questions? If not, you guys get, oh, 30 minutes of your lives back. Um, I think since we're having uh, 
some issues with uh, with some microphones. I will say goodbye for everybody. Is that okay, guys? Um, we will see you uh, in a week. Enjoy yourselves. Um, yeah, the, the Smitty Gradable will, will be up as soon as I can get um, as soon as I get a contact. Okay. We'll see you guys in a little bit. It'll be up in the next fifteen minutes. All right. My internet's been going in and out all day, so I think that's part of the problem. Bye.